Okay, great. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this webinar brought to you by FX Street. My name is James Chen. I am the Director of Technical Research and Education at FXDD. Now, I would like to quickly apologize for yesterday. Um, I was literally in a traffic jam, and I couldn't get to this webinar, so I do apologize for that. For those of you who were there yesterday, I did not show up, and I, uh, and I do apologize about that. And uh, just now, for some reason, uh, I had a, a little bit of a technical difficulty and uh, my, my computer just crashed. But uh, anyway, so let's move on uh, from there. Um, okay, great. So uh, uh, once again, welcome to this uh, FX Street webinar. Um, today, uh, I, you know, it's usually my, uh, my analysis webinar where I uh, show you some uh, high probability setups, et cetera. Uh, what I'm going to be talking about today, uh, only because there has been a lot of, uh, uh, I've gotten a lot of questions regarding this. And uh, uh, this particular topic, I'm going to be talking about divergences today. And uh, for those of you who have heard me talk about divergences a uh, long time ago in the past, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to bring it up today. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Uh, I have a, a lot of examples to show you uh, in terms of divergences, uh, both, uh, you know, in the past as well as uh, very, very uh, recently, and uh, how they can help you in terms of uh, adding to your overall uh, technical arsenal when you're trading uh, in the Forex market or whatever uh, market you may be trading. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about how oscillators are, uh, oscillator divergence uh, can be used as uh, really good warnings and uh, confirmations um, that go in conjunction with your other tools to help you make uh, trading decisions, especially when it comes to uh, looking for a directional bias or looking for reversals in the market or uh, continuations of trends in the market or what have you, uh, they can be extremely useful in doing that. That being said, um, I, I still do not, uh, you, I would not use divergences as uh, purely, you know, a decision-making tool, um, you know, just in and of itself. So, uh, you know, if I see a divergence, I'm, sure I'm not necessarily going to get into a, a, any type of a trade uh, based on that alone. I will put that in conjunction with my other tools. So I'm going to show you a bunch of charts uh, in a second. Uh, let me uh, just give you a brief, a brief background on divergences uh, first. So let me move on here real quick. Uh, so once again, forex trading with price oscillator divergences. I'm going to go through um, uh, the background and uh, you know the different types of divergences as well as the uh, uh, the examples on the charts. And if you, if you know some, something about divergences, I think this should also be useful uh, for you because, uh, you know, just as a, a refresher, um, and also if you have any questions, uh, because I use uh, divergences uh, pretty extensively in conjunction with my other tools. Okay, uh, quickly, a risk disclaimer. Foreign exchange trading carries a high level of risk that may not be suitable for all investors. Um, do not invest money that you cannot afford to lose. Educate yourself on the risks associated with foreign exchange trading and seek advice from an independent financial or tax advisor if you have any questions. I'll leave that up for just a few seconds, and then I'm going to move on. Okay. Um, very quickly about me, who are not familiar with uh, who I am or what I do. Um, my name again is James Chen. Uh, I am uh, the Director of Technical Research and Education at FXDD. Um, we are a foreign, uh, you know, we are a, a global foreign exchange broker uh, based here in the U.S., as well as in um, Malta. Uh, in the uh, in the Euro uh, European Union, uh, I'm an, I have been an active forex trader since the inception of retail forex, and I use primarily technical analysis, as those of you who know me uh, know already. Also traded equities and futures prior to trading forex, but ever since the retail market for forex came out, I've been pretty much uh, concentrated on the forex market. I'm a, a CMT or a chartered market technician, as well as a registered commodity trading advisor. And I publish daily and intraday forex technical analysis. You'll be able to find that on uh, forex.fxdd.com. I also have webinars um, on uh, fxdd.com in terms of uh, you know education as well as analysis. Uh, I've authored numerous articles in uh, such publications as Forbes, uh, Futures Magazine, uh, Stocks and Commodities, SFO. Uh, my next article is coming out in SFO Magazine, and it is on my deep pullback strategy, which is one of the strategies that I use. Um, on a trend following basis. I actually talked about this last time on fxstreet.com. So if you have any questions about that, you could uh, take a look at the magazine or feel free to contact me. Um, I am quoted by uh, Reuters News, Dow Jones Associated Press International, 
Carl Tribune, and a bunch of others. I'm the author of two books, Essentials of Foreign Exchange Trading, Essentials of Technical Analysis for Financial Markets, both uh, both um, published by John Wiley and Sons in the last couple of years, and High Probability Trend Following in the Forex Market, which is a DVD set that's brought up by FXStreet.com back in 2010, last year. And uh, I'm very happy to have uh, worked with FX Street very extensively in the past uh, several years. Uh, both on this DVD set as well as, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, doing a uh, conference with them in Barcelona. So I'm very, very happy to be here. Um, okay. So uh, let's go on to uh, talk about divergence trading. Now, um, those of you who know a lot about divergence trading or who have heard me talk about it before, please do bear with me uh, because uh, I do have a lot of new examples here, and I would like to show you, you know, exactly how I use it from uh, you know a trading perspective, how I use price oscillator divergences. For those of you who don't know anything about divergences, this should be a very, very good uh, introduction for you. Okay, what is divergence trading? Well, first of all, a divergence is simply a difference, an imbalance, a disagreement uh, between, uh, in this case, two things. One is price and the other is an oscillator. And what do I mean by oscillator? When I talk about oscillators, I could mean uh, the stochastics, I could mean RSI, and I could mean um, MACD, uh, any number of different oscillators out there. Now, a lot of people may ask me, uh, a lot of people do ask me, what you know, uh, oscillators, you know, moving averages, all these indicators are lagging indicators. Why, why are you using them? Yes, they are lagging indicators. Uh, the vast majority or pretty much all uh, mathematical indicators that you find in your charts and your charting package are lagging indicators. However, that does not mean that they are of no use. They can be of extremely uh, good use if uh, you know how to use them. And, um, you know, this is one way that you could use uh, these types of indicators and oscillators. So, again, a divergence, what is it? It's an imbalance. It's a disagreement. It's a difference between price and an oscillator. Okay? I tend to use stochastics a lot uh, when I look for divergences. Uh, so what does this mean? So you're, uh, it's a um, it's an imbalance between the extremes, the peaks or the valleys, uh, with uh, with you know between a price uh, between price and the oscillator. Okay, when they diverge in the regular in uh, relative direction, that's what we call a divergence. Now these uh, divergence trading or divergence signals are used primarily as warning or confirmations of a significant potential price event. Now the vast majority of people that uh, talk about divergence trading or uh, trade divergences are talking about what's called regular divergence, which is um, which uh, talks mostly or which which is concerned mostly with reversals. Okay, now uh, there's another kind of divergence that's called hidden divergence that's, con uh, you know, concerned mostly with uh, trend continuations. Now, uh, you know, again, when most people talk about divergences, they're talking about, uh, you know, looking for reversals, which is fine. And I'm going to show you a bunch of those uh, in a second, but I just want you to know that there are a couple different types of uh, divergences that, uh, you know, we generally look at. Okay, so the price event that we're looking at, um, you know, in terms of uh, uh, when we have a divergence, what we're looking for is some type of price event, significant price event to occur. This could be a reversal, it could be a consolidation, or it could be a trend continuation, depending on the type of divergence that you're looking for. Now, this type of, uh, uh, you know, these types of uh, divergence signals are great for supporting trade decisions or, uh, you know, warning of uh, a potential move in the market. So they're used as, uh, you know, supporting sort of uh, uh, supporting um, uh, factors within your trade decision. So if you have other factors, let's say, for example, you, you're looking at candlestick patterns, you're looking at moving averages, you're looking at trend lines, et cetera. Uh, divergences can be extremely helpful in augmenting those other signals to provide you with a high probability trading opportunity. Okay, now, uh, divergences, uh, like I mentioned, divergences contribute to high probability trading by adding substantial rationale for any trading decision. It's what we call confluence. If you have several different factors telling you that, yes, this is the direction I'm looking to go in, this is the opportunity I'm looking to go up, for example, I'm looking to go long on this particular uh, trade. If we have several different signals or several different factors in your um, trading, which includes divergences, 
that contributes to what we call cloud forms. Okay, I'm gonna uh, get through questions in a second after I uh, get through all this. Um, now, uh, divergences, uh, you know, uh, price oscillator divergences usually appear early. So they serve well as prior warning indicators. So, for example, I might see a divergence, a bearish regular divergence, let's say, which is telling me that there's a possibility that we're looking to go short uh, on a reversal. Now, uh, that oftentimes occurs early. And then another signal will help support that rationale to go short. And then yet another one, and then I have a trigger to get in short. So uh, oftentimes, uh, this is a good prior warning that perhaps we're looking for some type of price event like a reversal, a consolidation, or a trend continuation. Okay. So what are divergences? They're anomalies. Okay. They're not uh, normal. So basically, uh, you know, when you look at a price and an oscillator, their extremes between the price and the oscillator, their peaks and valleys should mirror each other. So if you have a higher high in price, then you should have a higher high in the oscillator. If you have a lower low in price, you should have a lower low in the oscillator. Now, when we have a divergence, that's what's called an anomaly. When it's not uh, that way, when it doesn't mirror each other, and when this ha when this happens. It's an imbalance or disagreement that we're looking for price to correct. And that is what we're looking for when we're looking at divergences. So we're looking for price to correct these abnormalities, these anomalies, these imbalances or disagreements. We're looking for uh, price to correct this, and uh, that's the opportunity that we're looking at in terms of trading. Okay, so there are two categories of divergence. Number one, regular or classic divergence. Okay, now let's just call it regular. And then there's another uh, type that's called hidden. So uh, regular and hidden are the two main categories of divergence. I'm going to show you all the, uh, on the charts in a second. There are four types of divergence within these two categories. They are bearish regular, bullish regular, bearish hidden, bullish hidden. Okay? Now, let's go and take a look at what they mean. Um, before I get to that, uh, what are the ways we measure divergence? Well, obviously, as I mentioned, price. And you'll always see price as the main aspect of your charts, okay, or you should. Uh, uh, the oscillator, you can use stochastics, uh, RSI. I usually use stochastics, but you could use RSI, which is the relative strength index, CCI, which is the uh, commodity channel index, MACD, MACD histogram, rate of change, Williams percent R, or really any other indicator that travels between horizontal bounds. And when an indicator travels between horizontal bounds, that's usually called an oscillator. So on both price and the oscillator, we use trend line drawing tools to compare heights of swing high to swing high or swing low to swing low, okay? And I'll show you this in, in one second. Now, an equal high or an equal low can also be part of a divergence, and I'll tell you exactly what I mean when I show you my charts. Okay, these are the types of divergence, but this is really text heavy. So I'm going to go to my, uh, uh, I'm going to go to my um, uh, illustrations here. Okay, so what are we talking about when we're talking about, again, there are two categories of divergence. Number one is regular divergence. Number two is hidden divergence. Okay, and within these, there's bearish and bullish on both. Okay, so let's talk first about regular divergence. And if you remember in the beginning of this webinar, what I was saying was that uh, when most people talk about divergence, they're talking about this right here. They're talking about regular divergence. Okay, regular divergence is very easy to understand. Uh, it's very intuitive, okay? And let me just tell you what this, what this is. I'm going to start with bearish regular divergence. Bearish regular divergence means in price, you have a higher high, as you can see here. And again, we're using trend line tools to measure these. So in price, you have a higher high. In the oscillator, you have a lower high. And this, I believe, is RSI. You have a lower high in the oscillator, okay? So once again, higher high in price, lower high in the oscillator. That is an imbalance. That is a divergence. That is a disagreement. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for price to correct that disagreement by doing something. In this case, we're looking for a downside move. Okay? So, once again, higher high in price, lower high in the oscillator. Okay? This lower high in the oscillator, what is an oscillator but a momentum indicator? So, the momentum indicator is telling me that there is a loss of upside momentum because we have a higher high in price, but the uh, oscillator, which is a momentum indicator, is telling me that there's a lower high in price uh, in the oscillator, I'm sorry, which means that there's a loss of upside momentum, loss of upside momentum. 
So that means we're looking for a potential turn to the downside. Okay, hopefully that makes sense to you. That's why we call it bearish divergence, bearish regular divergence. Loss of us on momentum, looking for a downside run um, from there. Okay, or at least an end to the upside. Okay, and if you take a look at this uh, at here up here, it may be very hard to see at this particular um, uh, example here, but you see that uh, you know that is sort of a shooting star candle. And uh, you know if uh, you know if you've heard me speak before, you know that I talk a lot about confluence and different factors telling me that perhaps this is the right way to you know right right thing to do or right direction to be trading in. So you see there's sort of a shooting star candle up there. There's also this divergence. Uh, you know, if that occurred right around resistance, then that for me is a good turning point or a pivot point um, for looking for a possible trade to the downside. Now, how would you trade that? Would you sell short right at the top? Well, if you're at the top, you probably don't know um, that this is going to happen yet. You don't have all the uh, signals in place. So perhaps a trigger would be a breakdown of this, uh, if you can imagine, um, an uptrend support line right over here. Um, hopefully you can see my mouse. But uh, an uptrend support line right over here, that is a possibility for getting in on a trigger to the downside, going short, after we have all these signals. We have these signals for the uh, bearish regular divergence. We have the uh, shooting star candle. And if that occurred at resistance, then that's a possibility for getting to a short trade. Okay, so that was besides the point. But uh, first of all, this is bearish regular divergence. Higher high in price, lower high in oscillator, loss of upside momentum, potential downside move. That's bearish regular divergence. Let's go to the next one. Bullish regular divergence. Bullish regular divergence is sort of the opposite of bearish regular divergence, which is simply you got a lower low in price, you got a higher low in the oscillator. This is uh, the oscillator, this is stochastics in this case. This is telling you that there's a loss of downside momentum. We got a lower low in price which is, you know, which looks like it's going to keep going down, right? Um, a lower low in price, but then we got a higher low in the oscillator. The oscillator is a momentum indicator. Momentum is telling us that there's a loss of downside momentum, possibility for a turn to the upside, okay? And if you have other signals telling you to do so, to go long, then perhaps this is uh, might be, a uh, you know, this area, okay? It's very hard to always pick the uh, tops and bottoms, but uh, if you have some type of a trigger to get into that long trade, you know, of course, after this uh, bottom occurs, um, then, uh, you, you know, you might possibly have a good uh, potential opportunity to get into a trade. Okay, so that's bullish regular divergence. So bearish regular divergence, higher high in price, lower high in the oscillator. Bullish regular divergence, lower low in price, higher low in the oscillator. Talk about loss of downside momentum, potential turn to the upside. Now let's talk about hidden divergence. Hidden divergence is a bit different. OK, it's, it's actually a lot different, but uh, a lot of people will will say that uh, hidden divergence is counterintuitive. It's not very easy to understand, but it uh, is more higher, it's higher probability because it's a with the trend move. Now, if you look at regular divergence on these two, bearish regular divergence and bullish regular divergence, you'll see that these are counter trend opportunities. We're looking to play reversals. OK. Now, if we go to hidden uh, divergence, we're looking to play continuations of the trend. So uh, we have bearish hidden divergence here, and there are two types of uh, uh, the uh, hidden divergence category, bearish and bullish. Okay, so bearish uh, hidden divergence. And for those of you who uh, are getting confused by this, uh, this will be recorded. So um, if you want to go over this, um, you know, at your leisure, that would be great. Also, if you have any questions about this or if you want this, um, uh, this PowerPoint, uh, you can uh, feel free to email me at jchen at fxdd.com, and I'll be uh, sure to send it to you. And uh, I'll put my uh, email address uh, at the end so you can uh, do that. Okay, so anyway, so this is bearish hidden divergence. This is the second category of divergence called hidden divergence. Bearish hidden divergence is, you know, uh, is a bearish signal. So what is this talking about? Bearish hidden divergence, lower high. What is a lower high in uh, – uh, in you know on the charts, but downtrend resistance. Okay, lower high is downtrend resistance. So if you're connecting all these highs here, it's basically downtrend resistance. So if you got a lower high, you're talking about a downtrend. 
Okay. Now, if you have a higher high in the oscillator, in this case, I think this is uh, RSI as well. If you have a higher high in the oscillator. That's an imbalance. That's a divergence. What does it talk about? It talks about a potential continuation of the downtrend. Okay. Hopefully that makes some sense. Lower high in, in uh, the oscillator, higher high in the, the, I'm sorry, lower high in price, higher high in the oscillator talks about a potential continuation of the, uh, of the downtrend. Okay. So once again, bearish hidden divergence. Next one, bullish hidden divergence is simply the opposite. Bullish hidden divergence is a higher low in price. And what is a higher low in price? But uptrend support. Higher low in price is uptrend support. Okay, so we have higher low in price, uh, which, which defines an uptrend. And then we've got a lower low in the oscillator. That's a disagreement. That's a divergence. That's an imbalance. How does price uh, correct that disagreement? By a continuation of the uptrend. Okay, so continuation up. Okay, so like I said, hidden divergence is less intuitive, almost counterintuitive. However, uh, a lot of people think it's more, it's up a higher probability because it's a with the trend move as opposed to regular divergence, which is an against the trend or a reversal move. Okay, so let's go charts in a second, but let me just uh, review this real quick. Bearish regular divergence. Bearish regular divergence, higher high in price. Lower high in the oscillator, loss of upside momentum, looking for a downside move. That's bearish regular divergence. Bullish regular divergence, lower low in price, higher low in the oscillator, loss of downside momentum, looking for a potential move to the upside. Bearish hidden divergence, lower high in price, which is a downtrend, higher high in the oscillator. We're looking for a continuation of the downtrend. That's bearish hidden divergence. Bullish hidden divergence, higher low in price, lower low in the oscillator. We're looking for a continuation of the uptrend. Okay, continue to the upside on bullish hidden divergence. All right, let's go to the charts. I got a lot of charts to see. Um, let's move back. Let's go to the uh, beginning of this. Uh, well, first of all, let me show you the, uh, the euro dollar daily chart real quick. Okay. Hopefully, yes. Oh. Okay. Hopefully, you can see that. Uh, let me get to these questions real quick first. Uh, Jack says, um, I heard somebody said divergence is due to miss uh, setup of indicator parameter. Uh, is it true or false? I don't think so. I, I think that's, uh, I don't think that's correct. Uh, due to, I, I th if I understand your question, due to the miss setup of uh, indicator parameters? Uh, no, not really. Uh, you can use different parameters on the uh, on the indicator, on the oscillator, but um, divergence is not really due to that. Uh, Erwin, what are your settings for RSI? Usually, Erwin, I use, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't use uh, RSI that much, but uh, when I do, it's usually just a, a 14. And for stochastics, I'll use either 14.33, 8.33, or 5.33. Depending. Okay. Uh, Boyke, which time frames are best to see these? Uh, you know, Boyke, that's a great question. Uh, you know, these uh, occur, and I always say this, uh, these occur on all different time frames. And uh, I'm going to show you a, a daily chart, and I'm going to show you um, an uh, hourly chart. So, uh, you know, really on all the time frames that, that you could look at. Uh, hidden versions. Jose, uh, hidden divergence is the same as pullback of the current trend. Um, let me think. Yes. Yeah, I think uh, that's a great way to, uh, Jose, that's a great way to, uh, uh, to, um, characterize it. It's a pullback of the current trend. Yes. Very good point. Okay, good. Okay, good. So, uh, this is, uh, Euro dollar. This is an hourly chart. Actually, let me go first to the daily chart and just show you, uh, what I'm looking at. You know, uh, very quickly, uh, you know, there's so many examples here of, uh, of these types of, uh, divergences. Let me just go through them one by one. Uh, you know, you, you look, you take a look here. Um, uh, let's start with, uh, let me see. 
let's start with this over here. Okay, so we got a, a lower low in price. Okay, this is a back in the day. I'm going to show you more recent examples in a second, but I just want to show you how many times this actually uh, occurs and, you know, how well, you know, it, it, it seems to confirm and help out your, uh, your trading. So you got a lower low in price right here. You got a higher low in the stochastic. I'm using, as you can see, D1433, lower low in price, higher low in the stochastic. That's a bullish, uh, that's a bullish regular divergence. A possibility for some type of reversal to occur. So, uh, you know, we look to uh, possibly, if we have other factors telling us to go long uh, at this point, or uh, you know, start uh, looking for some type of a uh, some type of a uh, reversal pattern, then this this is a good uh, signal for that. Right after that occurs, what do we have? But we have bullish, we have bullish hidden divergence. So uh, bullish regular divergence over here, and then followed uh, immediately by bullish hidden divergence. We got a, a higher low in price. Lower uh, low in the oscillator, so continuation of the uptrend. There we have it right there. Okay, so um, here's another one, uh, one following another. We have a higher low in price right here. Okay, higher low in price, and then we got a lower low in the oscillator that is bullish, uh, bullish uh, hidden divergence, and then we got a higher low in price. I'm sorry, higher high in price here. With the lower high in the oscillator, and that is bearish hidden, uh, bearish regular divergence, and then we have a reversal right over here. Okay, um, but there's a better example I wanted to show you. That's even a little bit further back. Okay, and here, right, right back here, if you take a look, uh, we have a, a, a very good example of uh, this type of a move. Okay, and this is way back in the day, so you know, uh, but uh, this is a really, really good example, and one of the best examples I could find. Okay, so we have here uh, on euro dollar a higher high in price, okay, a lower high in the oscillator, and talk about confluence here. Now, one, first of all, we have a bearish hidden divergence, okay, bearish hidden divergence, higher high in price, lower high in the oscillator, and um, and that's uh, that means a, a loss in upside momentum and a possible turn to the downside. But what else do we have? And I show this all the time on all my webinars because it's such a great example. But uh, we have here not only bearish hidden divergence, we also have a retest, an almost exact retest of all-time highs right here. Okay, so this is strong resistance. Also, we have a, a candle here that's looking uh, like it's being rejected towards the upside. This is sort of called a, a shooting star or a doji sh shooting star or a doji, uh, what have you. And uh, Boyke, yes. Hopefully... Uh, Revac, you say no screen. Hopefully you can see my screen now. Okay, if you cannot see my screen, please let me know. Okay, good. Okay, so, uh, okay, uh, Revac, you may have to, uh, do something. Uh, I'm not sure uh, why you're not seeing my screen. It looks like, uh, most other people are. Okay, so, uh, higher high in price, uh, lower, this is a, a bearish regular divergence. Happens right at resistance. With a sort of a sort of a shooting star uh, type of uh, doji right here. Okay. Now, how do you get into this trade? Now, this is not necessarily, you know. Again, if I can get in at the top, I'll get in at the top. Am I that smart? You know, not usually. Uh, am I gonna, um, you know, always get uh, be able to choose tops and bottoms? You know, not necessarily at all. It's very very difficult to do that. Now, how do you get into this type of trade? When you see all these signals. What are the, ch the charts are telling you something, okay? But how do you get into the trade? Again, like I mentioned, uh, when I try to get into trades, I'm looking most of the time to get in on breakouts. And right here with this black line that you see right here, uh, this is a, a good possibility for getting into this type of a trade after all these confluence signals took place. So we have a uh, very strong resistance. We have a, uh, a candlestick pattern here. We have bearish regular divergence. We have a break to the downside that was a beautiful breakdown. And that uh, is my trigger on this breakdown below this counter trend or this, I'm sorry, this uh, uptrend support line. And that is my um, signal right there. Okay. So just to show you how you could use the confluence, I'm sorry, you could use the uh, uh, divergence in, in, con in conjunction with your other tools uh, to create confluence. Okay. So let's, let's move on real quick. I showed you this one over here. I showed you that one there. Um, now over here, you take a look over here. You see that, uh, you see that we have lower lows, uh, lower highs in the price, higher high in the stochastics, 
And that's a possibility for, that's a hidden, bearish hidden divergence possibility for a continuation of the downtrend. Okay. This is a very strong signal right here. Lower low in price, higher low in the oscillator, potential for a reversal, a turn to the upside. Okay. And, uh, and this was a very strong one right here. Following that, right after that, we have a uh, bullish hidden divergence, which is lower, a higher low in price, lower low in the, in the uh, oscillator, in the stochastics, and that is a potential continuation of the uptrend. Okay. Now, especially at turning points where you see the, uh, the regular divergence, uh, they can be very, very strong oftentimes. Okay. Um, and these can really contribute very well to your trading. So here we see a higher high in price, lower high in the oscillator. That's classic uh, bearish regular divergence. How do you get into this type of trade? Uh, you know, that's up to you. But uh, there could be ways to get in on breaks. You know, for me, again, breakout. So I'm looking possibly for a break below a counter trend or a break below an, uh, an uptrend line or a break below uh, support resistance or what have you, okay? Uh, now, that's provided uh, that there are, other, uh, there are other signals that are telling me that uh, there might be a reversal here. For example, we have the 142.50 area, uh, which is very strong uh, support resistance on euro dollar. Okay, let's move forward real quick. Uh, here we have the... Uh, uh, yeah, bearish engulfing pattern. There we go. Very nice, Tom. Uh, bearish engulfing pattern right there as well. Okay, we got strong resistance. We got bearish engulfing pattern. We have, uh, we also have the, uh, the, the bearish, uh, regular divergence. So very nice confluence right, right there. Okay, Tom, very good, uh, very good, uh, pointing that out. Uh, Jose, you may have answered, but when do you know how to draw, uh, when do you know to draw the line above or below the candles and the oscillator? Um, oh, okay. So, uh, you know that because there are only really four types of, uh, divergence that I look at. Um, so for regular divergence, it's either above, it's a higher high. Uh, I'm sorry, you're, you're connecting highs in, uh, in, diver, uh, in, uh, Regular divergence or lows in, in um, regular divergence. Well, you know, actually, the best bet, you know, you'll know because uh, if you if you know how to, uh, you know, look at bearish and uh, bullish hidden and regular divergence, then you'll know uh, whether to draw them uh, above or below. Okay, so like uh, if you're looking for bearish uh, regular divergence right here with this higher high. Uh, and then you'll know that you're drawing it above the candle. So you really just have to get to know them more, and then you'll know exactly what, what to do, whether to draw them above or below. Okay, hopefully that makes some sense. Um, okay, so uh, we have a, a higher, a lower low in price here, higher low in the oscillator, potential for, an, uh, for uh, you know, bullish uh, regular divergence. Now, most, uh, let me see, more recently, uh, you know, higher low in the price, Lower low in the oscillator. Okay, this is uh, bullish regular divergence. Okay, over here we have uh, bullish. Uh, uh, this, I'm sorry, this was bullish hidden divergence. Right over here we have bullish regular divergence. Lower low in price, higher low in the oscillator. Uh, potential turn to the upside, uh, etc. Now, um, if you take a look here, well, let me see one second here. You know, uh, if you take a look here, for example, you know, uh, what should usually happen is, uh, again, is price should follow the, uh, price should follow the, um, I mean, I'm sorry, the oscillator should follow price. So if you have, a, let's say, a lower low here, okay, in price, then you should also have a lower low, um, a lower high. You should also have a lower high in the oscillator. So uh, normally speaking, that's the way it should work. Now, again, when it doesn't work that way, that's when you're looking for some type of a, uh, some type of a, you know, price to, uh, correct that imbalance or discrepancy. So as we see here, and this is most recently, we have very strong, uh, bullish regular divergence right here. Lower, lower in price, higher, low in the oscillator, uh, potential turn to the upside. And then, uh, followed, uh, right away, 
by, and this is a very, very clear example here. Let me make this a little bit smaller so you can see it a bit better. Okay. Okay. This is very, very clear right here. Now, and I show this, uh, you know, I've been showing this for quite some time. Uh, you have a, a bearish regular divergence, okay? So you have a higher high in price here, okay? And a lower high in the stochastics. Now that talks about potential turn to the downside. But not only that, and talk about confluence, not only that, once again, we have the 142.50 area, okay? 142.50 area, much like back here, though, which I just showed you. Okay, 142.50 area was key resistance, support and resistance on uh, euro dollar. Okay, so we hit that with a bearish regular divergence. Okay, also we reach the bottom of this uptrend support line. So we have a confluence of you know about three or maybe more factors telling us that we might be looking for some type of a turn to the downside at this point. Okay, which does happen. So again, 142.50 strong resistance, bottom side you know of this uptrend support line. Also bearish regular divergence. You put that together, you have a pretty strong confluence, okay? And how do you get into this trade? I don't know. How did you get into this trade? You know, possibly with a breakdown below here, okay? And then right away, it turns into this sort of, uh, if you take a look here, this is sort of a inverted um, inverted pendant pattern or a little triangle pattern. It breaks to the downside, and then we have a continuation, and that was very good. And then right now, what we're looking at on euro dollar at least, is, uh, you know, lots of... Uh, uh, you know, bearishness, uh, peppered by, uh, pullbacks and consolidations. So that's what we're looking for. It's a very regular, very nice looking trend, uh, that I'm looking personally looking for further downside as we break further and further to the downside continuations down, continuing this downtrend. Okay. So, but that's besides the point. We have very strong, uh, divergence in many, many cases here. Okay. All right. Let's go to, uh, the next one here. Same type of thing. This is, uh, this is, uh, pound dollar. You know, same type of thing here. Very strong examples here of, uh, potential, uh, divergences. This was a strong one right here. You know, higher, high in price, lower, high in the oscillator. That's a, a potential for, uh, uh that's a, a bearish regular divergence potential for a turn to the downside. You know, and that's when this, uh, this whole, uh, wedge formation took place. And then we saw a breakdown below this wedge right here, okay? And then from there, you know, uh, we saw a lower low in price, higher low on the oscillator. This is a bullish regular divergence, turn to the upside, uh, you know, possibility for a turn to the upside. It didn't have to do that, but that was one signal that perhaps there might be a, a turn to the upside. And what do we see here? Another confluence factor right here. First of all, we have a very strong low right here, as we can see. Okay, a very strong low right around one for, uh, 153.40 or so. Okay, and then we have this very strong candlestick pattern. This could be called a hammer candle. It could be called whatever you want to call it. I don't care what you call it, but look at this. Very long uh, lower wick. Talks about rejection towards the downside, uh, you know, possible uh, failure towards the downside and a move towards the upside. Um, okay, so then turn to the upside. Uh, okay, now here's a uh, here's a quick uh, and interesting example. We have um, uh, one type of divergence uh, within another. So here we have a lower high in price, okay, higher high in the oscillator, and a potential for uh, continuation of the down move, which happens. Now encompassing that is a lower low in price, higher low in the oscillator, and that is bullish regular divergence and uh, a move to the upside. So very very interesting there. Okay. Um, uh, Sophie, I see Jose Point. For me, bearish regular divergence is bullish hidden divergence. No, it's not really. Uh, you know, uh, what I'll do is uh, you could uh, look at this uh, more uh, closely when you, if you want to email me, I'll send you the uh, slides. But uh, it's not the same thing. Uh, bearish regular divergence and bullish hidden divergence is not the same thing. Definitely not. Uh, okay, uh, at is there any live example on your chart uh, today? Well, I'm showing you right now. Um, I'm showing you a uh, uh, a euro dollar hourly chart right now. So I'll get to that in a second. At uh, Solomon, 
which time frame is best to use when you analyze the divergences. As I mentioned, and I think Boyke asked the same question, uh, you know, um, divergences, divergences can be on all different types of time frames. Uh, I'm going to be showing you a couple different ones, daily, hourly, but, uh, you know, you can basically look on anything. Um, and it's what we call fractal. They occur on different time frames. Talon, uh, on 30th November is the most interesting divergence. Please comment. On the daily chart, Talon? 30th November. I'm not sure which uh, chart you're looking at, but let me... Uh... Oh, okay, okay. Thanks, Tom. Okay, so uh, you, this is a euro dollar... Uh, and this is a euro dollar hourly chart and same type of thing here, you know, just to show you a different time frames. Uh, you know, we've got this, uh, this type of thing here. You know, uh, this is a, a bearish regular, a bearish regular divergence. Here we have another, um, divergence within a divergence. Uh, here we have a, a lower high in price, higher high in the oscillator uh, talks about potential uh, move to the downside. But here within that, we have bullish uh, regular divergence, lower, lower in price, higher, low in the oscillator, potential move to the upside. So uh, divergence within the divergence, which is always very interesting. Um, okay, so, uh, um, you know, lower lows here on the hourly chart, higher lows on the oscillator. Uh, this is a uh, um, bullish regular divergence. And then over here we have uh, bullish hidden divergence followed uh, shortly thereafter. So uh, higher, low in price, lower, high, lower, low in the oscillator, potential for continuation. And then right here, most recently, we have a bearish um, a bearish regular divergence. Now, if you take a look here, very quickly, I think I'm running out of time. If you take a look here, uh, what I was talking about before on my slides is that uh, you could have, let's say, one element of your divergence to be like a higher high, lower high, or what have you, and then the other to be equal, okay? So the fact here that we have a higher high in price okay, and an equal high in the oscillator can also be a divergence. I know this should be a lower high, but uh, when you have an equal high, that can also be a divergence. Why? Because here we have a very big uh, higher high here, and the oscillator is showing nothing like that. It's showing instead uh, an equal or a slightly lower high, and therefore that is also some uh, one type of a divergence, okay? Not as strong, in my opinion, as the other type of divergence where you have you know, for example, a higher high in price and a lower high in the oscillator, but a divergence nonetheless. So that's also uh, something you could use. Okay. Um, let me see here real quick. Um, there was a couple more I wanted to show you real quick before I close this out and answer any questions that you have. Okay. I mean, this is, uh, you know, this, for example, is uh, Euro Swiss. Uh, if you take a look back here, uh, we have a really good, um, what do you call it? This is a uh, bullish uh, regular divergence. So a really low, a lot lower low, and then a higher low on the oscillator. And uh, that was a key turning point. So, you know, again, you see many point, many times where uh, these could serve as prior warnings to potential turns in the market. You know, and I'm talking about, Regular divergence in this case. Okay, Boyke, uh, are stochastics best to use? Uh, I tend to use stochastics more, yes. Um, you know, have I tested the relative merits between uh, stochastics and uh, RSI and MACD and uh, all those when it comes to divergences? No, I have not. I've not, not done that test yet. Uh, however, uh, I tend to, uh, I've been using stochastics forever, and uh, they tend to use, work very well in terms of uh, uh, divergences. Uh, Solman, uh, uh, James, do you use any strategy based on divergences when you trade and what is your success rate? Uh, you know, usually I have many, many uh, strategies and a lot of mechanical strategies too. Uh, but in terms of divergences, uh, the way I use them is in conjunction with other uh, tools. Like, you know, I, I have my trend lines, I have my moving averages, I have my Fibonacci's and my chart patterns, et cetera, my candlestick patterns. I'm using my um, divergences in conjunction with those. So uh, I, I don't have a, uh, a me uh, you know, mechanical strategy, um, you know, an automated strategy that uses divergences yet. I have many 
automated and mechanical trading strategies they use that have, uh, you know, some are very successful, some are less successful. Um, but, uh, but in terms of divergences, that has not been, you know, I don't have any, um, mechanical or, uh, uh, you know, those types of, uh, automated types of strategies. Uh, Sophie, is there any divergence in Euro dollar H1 now? Uh, not that I saw, not at this very second, but very recently, yes, there were. Okay, so, uh, let me just, uh, quickly, Okay, and let me just quickly put in my email address. Uh, for those of you who want to uh, email me and ask for the slides in case you, you know you just want to study a little bit more about uh, what, what are the types of divergences, please feel free to email me. I'm more than happy to send it to you. And uh, I just would like to, um, you know, uh, it's great to uh, see you all you guys. Again, I apologize for not being here yesterday. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you guys next month on another webinar at uh, FX Street. And uh, until then, I would like to... Uh, I would like to um, wish all of you happy holidays and happy new year and see you all next year. Thank you very much.